hello everyone good morning and good afternoon can you guys hear me well and can you see my screen thank you vikas good afternoon as well how about others can you guys hear me well Thanks, Sajid. Thanks, Raja. So uh, let's wait for maybe two or three minutes. Uh, hopefully, more participants are going to join. Let's give them some time, and then we will begin our discussion. Yeah, I hope it's okay with everyone. Thank you. Hi everyone all right so i think we have waited enough and uh, i hope everyone has joined so let's begin the discussion today before we start the discussion um, i will introduce myself my name is amit i'm based out of bangalore india and i have been in the industry for close to around 15 years now and i have been i started working as a developer i worked on c and c plus plus and then moved to uh, move to a little bit of verification and then move to integration and build and release profile and now i am working as a devops manager for my current employer in my current role i work on various technologies devops technologies starting from version control systems to um, configuration management tools uh, which we are going to learn today and uh, we deliver devops solutions to our internal and external partners yeah so that is me and today we are going to talk about infrastructure as code or as you would like to say, uh, you know, configuration management, server configuration management, or um, infrastructure configuration management, right? So today we are going to understand uh, why do we have uh, infrastructure as code concepts? What are the requirements? What are the problems that we face and which are solved by these tools, right? And then we will see a small demo of Ansible to understand, you know, basic Ansible structure. 
yeah so i will just move this questions window a bit away okay there's a question from vikas i am learning python for data science is this session beneficial for me short answer no unless you are working as a devops professional or as an infrastructure uh, operations support this topic will not be beneficial for you directly okay so why do we need infrastructure as code so when uh, you know uh, you step in uh, into the feet of uh, the operations team or the team which manages the infrastructure where your applications may be deployed or where your critical tools may be running or hosted uh, we always talk about how do we configure those systems right so for example if we have let's say jenkins running on five virtual machines yeah uh, it is very easy to manage uh, i being a one person or any other person who has sufficient understanding of the infrastructure can manage these five applications on five different virtual machines or five different physical machines log into the server make any changes you know upgrade jenkins or whatever general tasks are there but let's say now you have to manage 500 different instances of Jenkins your team grows from 5 to 500 your infrastructure grows exponentially and you have to manage now 500 servers how do you do that yeah either you multiply the human resources by 10 that means you have 50 people or uh, maybe 100 people you know, looking after these 500 VMs which is doable but not economically viable and not uh, scalable yeah or you find an automated way to manage your infrastructure when we talk about management of the infrastructure what do we mean we mean that you know we need to patch the service uh, patch the operating system of the uh, of the servers uh, upgrade any applications that are running on the servers install any new applications on the server create users manage users you know delete files configuration files and all that stuff so if you have to manage 500 virtual machines or 500 machines that becomes a difficult task right so if you have to upgrade an application or deploy an application on 500 vms how do you do that right one of the challenge that we face in the industry today right second is when we want to deploy an application from our uh, deployment environment to the staging or to to production environment right how do we make sure that we configure the environment exactly as the application needs it how do we make sure that if our application is running perfectly in test then it should run perfectly in production right so how do we deploy our application so that uh, um, so that our uh, application runs smoothly and there are no dependency missing yeah so that is one more problem that is solved by infrastructure as code or configuration management yeah and then comes application failures how do you do rollbacks let's say uh, yesterday we rolled out a new version of jenkins on these 500 vms and we figured out that there is a bug which we did not realize was existing uh, before now users are coming back that there is a bug and we need to roll back how do we do that it's easy to do in one or two or five machines but how do we roll back on uh, 500 different machines yeah so that is again one problem that is uh, that is faced by uh, the industry today so how do we um, and also yeah, you know this uh, this slide in front of you this slide explains how much uh, you know business critical applications may be right for example here in this uh, in this uh, case study there is an application called the train line and if the system goes down even for you know a couple of minutes then there is a huge revenue loss right if a, if a, if a company of 1.2 billion pounds annual revenue and the system goes down for maybe 5 minutes then the loss is in millions right apart from the monetary loss you lose your customers the customers lose trust on you trust is the biggest thing in the industry right there is so much cutthroat competition that trust is what customers keep with you yeah so 
that is the reason you know to keep your infrastructure always up and running to roll back quickly minimize application downtimes we need infrastructure as code right so what does infrastructure as code mean yeah let's keep this slide so what is what does infrastructure as code mean infrastructure as code means automating your server operations yeah by provisioning of code rather than doing it manually so if you want to uh, let's say install an application on a server then you don't do it manually by logging into server and installing or by connecting server and installing manually but you write a program to do it right and in the program you define what do you want to have on your servers if you want to install jenkins on a server you write a program for it if you want to install um if you want to in, if you want to create a user on 500 servers instead of connecting to each server and creating a user you write a program or you write a you, you write a small code for it which does that for you that's called infrastructure as code right so if you have a code ready made built in that means your infrastructure code is with you your infrastructure configuration is with you so if you get a new server and you want to bring it up to the standard configuration you can just run your code on that server and the server will be configured so no need for manual intervention or manual uh, interaction with the server yeah this is what infrastructure as code is all about any questions does it make sense the problem statement and what is IAC Uh, Vikram says cloud formation in AWS. Yes, it is something like that. Cloud. Uh, I wouldn't say it is cloud formation because cloud formation is uh, about bringing up your complete infrastructure from zero. Hmm? Uh, in ISE, you have already your infrastructure up. You configure your infrastructure, right? In cloud formation, uh, you can write a template and say, you know, bring up my uh, bring up an EC2 instance and that will do that but here in uh, infrastructure as code you don't bring up the infrastructure you configure the infrastructure so IAC uh, requires you to have a VM already up okay so there is a difference subtle difference here which scripting language required for IAC there is no specific scripting language needed you just need to write configuration files question in which programming language i am able to automate iac i think i answered that already is iac to be integrated with jenkins if yes how iac is not to be integrated with jenkins iac is independent concept uh, it is not uh, done using any ci cd or automation tool iac itself is complete automation yeah so we will see how in a bit so uh, when we talk about managing your infrastructure as code or automatically the first thing you can say is i can write a small script maybe a shell script or a python script and configure my infrastructure just like that so if i want to install jenkins on a system i can log into the system or remotely i can run a installation script on the system and jenkins will be configured based on my need yeah you can do that that is perfectly doable but there are a lot of limitations with this approach First limitation is you need to manually or you need to yourself manage those scripts. You have to write the scripts, test the scripts. If I need to do any enhancements, then again, you have to write and test and manage and you know identify if there are any bugs and all that. So there is one such limitation. Second limitation would be, let's say you execute a script and Jenkins is installed, but what if somebody goes and uninstalls Jenkins on all the servers? Then you have to run your script again. So you need to also monitor your infrastructure separately. Yeah, and there are a lot of corner cases, a uh, lot of error handling and case handling, which we have to do if you write your scripts uh, to manage your infrastructure. 
but in our case in IAC you get this get all these features of monitoring your infrastructure and uh, the automation the configuration everything done as a framework right there are a lot of solutions like puppet ansible chef salt stack things like that which allow you to not write any programs but write a small configuration which defines the configuration of a server right instead of writing the complete script you just define the configurations so for example here you can see that uh, on the left hand side if we have to create a user called spock we have to write a shell script to do that yeah so echo blah 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 to etc password and the user is created right so this is a program in itself there are a lot of uh, problems with this program for example what if user spock already exists right what if the uid of the spock is changed we want to restore it back correct so this script cannot be complete completely uh, relied on to manage your infrastructure yeah on the right hand side there is an example of puppet when we use puppet to manage our infrastructure in puppet we can just specify that manage the user spock with these configuration or these attributes and puppet will take care of connecting to the infrastructure connecting to the servers checking if user spock already exists if it exists is the configuration correct if it does not exist then create the user if the user is modified by someone then restore it to correct configuration and things like that if somebody goes afterwards and deletes the spock user puppet will again create it yeah so so using the cm tools will ensure that your infrastructure is always in the correct state even if someone else modifies it or even if someone and some someone else deletes any configurations from that puppet will restore it back or even ansible will restore it back yeah question from ajit how will it create if someone modifies it yeah we will see that we'll see that <clears throat> so what are the advantages of using infrastructure as code well it allows you to figure out which components to change when requirements change so let's say uh, you are developing their application and to deploy you need new version of Java right so you, you can just change the configuration of your infrastructure to, to mention that right now upgrade Java from Java 8 to Java 11 yeah and then redoing an implementation because the requirements have changed since the last implementation so you can replay it all the configurations are in plain text files so you can also version control it yeah so you can say okay uh, maybe this version is not correct let's restore the previous version of configuration and that will be done so in when we talk about uh, configuration management infrastructure configuration management this slide is very important it, it gives you a basic idea of of what happens all your infrastructure code right all the code which defines the state of your infrastructure like in on which server which user should be installed or on all the servers what applications should be installed all these configuration is present in a central location yeah so it, all your server configurations are present in the central location and those configurations are applied to your servers right so maybe your dev servers or test servers or any servers which are present in your in your infrastructure the configurations are applied from a central location to all the nodes or to all the uh, all the servers which are managed right now to achieve this there are two kinds of implementation one is called push configuration which you see on the left side a push configuration is nothing but a centralized server continuously pushes the configuration to all the machines that it is managing so for example if i change the configuration of uh, java version on uh, in my configuration file it will be automatically pushed to all the machines so all the machines will be automatically updated to the new version of java but then there is also one scenario or one architecture where we have 
pull configuration right in pull configuration each node or each machine is responsible each machine is responsible to pull the configuration from central server so configuration is always present on the central server in push configuration it is a central server's responsibility to push the configuration to the nodes in pull configuration it's a node's responsibility to pull the configuration from central server right examples of push configuration ansible examples of pull configuration puppet okay so what are the various components of using configuration management maybe we'll come back to this slide later when we have understand a certain tools in detail yeah we'll come back to this one so what are the various solutions now for uh, our configuration management or infrastructure as code tools we have puppet we have salt stack we have chef we have ansible there are others as well we have terraform uh, we have cf engine um, things like that yeah so but the major ones are puppet chef ansible and salt stack okay um as you can see here the most popular configuration management tool is ansible right this is like the google interest you know how many people are searching for a particular key term this is that so you can understand you know people search mostly for ansible and then mostly for uh, the next is chef and then the last is puppet it used to be the other way around puppet used to be the most popular infrastructure as code tool but now it has reduced in popularity and ansible has increased because of the simplicity that ansible has okay any questions till now there is one question from akash is the difference between shell script and ic libraries similar to using functional programming when prototyping versus using object oriented programming principles no 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 not at all you cannot relate these two um, that is uh, i would say incorrect all right so i didn't see any questions so i'll move forward now let's talk about ansible and at the end of this discussion we will also see a small demo of of ansible yeah so what is ansible ansible is it automation configuration management and provisioning tool at which implements the principles of infrastructure as code yeah so ansible uses playbooks to deploy manage build test and configure anything from full server environments to websites to custom compiled source code for application so to simplify this sentence we have playbooks in ansible where we store all the data all the configuration data which can be used which can be used to um, manage your infrastructure. Yeah, so we will see uh, a little bit of demo and a little bit of detailed instruction here and understand what this sentence completely means because right now it will be just some random buzzwords to you. Okay, so we will do that. So first let's understand um, uh, how Ansible, uh, what are the features of Ansible? Right, so Ansible works in again uh, push configuration. So you have a central server and you have multiple nodes which are attached or which are communicating to the server. Right, so the central server stores all the configuration and the configurations are applied to each node. Right, there need not be any agent running on each node. Right, so there's we know we don't need to run a counterpart program on the nodes. To communicate with uh, with ansible because ansible runs on ssh so if you enable ssh communication between your master and slave or master and node then you don't need any other communication so any other agent is not needed it is written in python so you can reuse a lot of python functionalities right as i said it follows push based architecture and it is very quick to set up with very minimal requirements extremely quick to set up yeah so this is one difference between ansible and puppet puppet is very 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 complex to set up it involves signing of certificate uh, 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 signing of uh, ssl certificates uh, establishing proper connection 
um, creation of nodes, installing agents. So it's very complex. Ansible is quite simple. Okay, we will see that in demo how simple it is to achieve infrastructure as code using Ansible. There are a couple of questions, I think. Uh, question, why is Ansible simpler than Puppet? So architecture of Ansible is simple compared to Puppet. Unfortunately, to explain the differences, I will need to explain Puppet also in detail. We don't have so much time. So I have chosen Ansible for this discussion. But just to give you an overview, I think I explained a little bit before as well. You need to have a complex setup for Puppet. Ansible is quite simple to set up. Ansible supports native protocols for communication. So you can communicate over SSH or a local connection or any other third party connection, even SSL. But with Puppet, you have to use SSL and then you have to set up authentication and certificate signing before you can do your configuration management. With Ansible, it is quite straightforward. And then after that, the structure in which you write your code is pretty simple in Ansible because you use YAML format. Uh, in Puppet, you have a sort of Ruby kind of format to write your configuration files, which makes it a bit complex. Right, so some um, top level differences, I think I can explain here. Playbooks are same as run books in Azure. I am sorry, I cannot comment on this. I'm not sure about Azure much. I have not used Azure that much. Is IAC to be used only for infra or can it to deploy application as well? You can use it for both. Puppet versus Chef, which is better? Uh, with Puppet versus Chef, I would say again, Chef is a little bit better. Uh, especially if you are working with AWS, then Chef is highly integrated with AWS. So that also is an advantage. Uh, but I would say Chef is a little bit user friendly. Can IAC work with cloud environment? Yes, it can work with cloud environment. It can work for managing your Kubernetes infrastructure as well. Not managing Kubernetes, Kubernetes uh, application as such, but Kubernetes infrastructure. Yeah, it's mostly on the lower level of the infrastructure, not application and virtualization level. So Ansible architecture, how, is it, how does Ansible work? So let's say we have a central server, which is again this laptop or desktop server, and we have machines which we are managing or the infrastructure which we are managing. So on the right hand side, we have we can see we have Ubuntu 10.2, 10.2.15. These are the IP addresses. Huh? So we have five Ubuntu machines with each IP address 10.2.115, 10.2.116, 10.2.117, 18, 19, things like that. So the server which has all the configuration can connect to these machines using SSH. So we need to enable the SSH communication. All the communication between the central server and the machines which are configured is via SSH. What are the configurations available on the central server? Uh, there is uh, an inventory file and there is playbook. Inventory file is nothing but the list of servers the, the uh, your Ansible is managing. So whatever servers are present in the inventory, only to those machines, uh, Ansible can manage, right? So whatever machines you want to manage with Ansible, you have to make sure that those are listed in inventory. We will see a hands-on and it will make more sense to you. And then we have playbooks. Playbooks are nothing but um, uh, the configurations file, which will contain all the server configurations. Yeah, before coming here, these are a little bit in detail. So let's see a quick demo to make make us familiar with Ansible and then understand what we are talking about here. So I have two machines. One is instance three, which we will also treat as the master machine where we will have all the configurations, right? I will clear the screen here. And on the right, we have instance four and we will treat this machine as a slave. Yeah, so um, let's see one second. Let's say Yeah, so we have slave 
and we have master so on the left hand side we have the master machine right hand side we have slave now to use ansible we need to first install it we need to install it only on the master yeah not on the slave so to see if ansible is already available i will type ansible command to see if it is already available for us and looks like ansible is already installed on the master on the slave as well ansible would be installed i think that is the standard uh, availability from ubuntu okay it is not installed so on three on my master ansible is already installed if it is not installed for you you can simply say apt install ansible and that should install ansible for you right when you install ansible you can just run the command ansible and get some output yeah if i say ansible hyphen version it can show me which version is installed so 281 is installed which is based on python 2.7 all right okay so now my target is that i want to manage the slave infrastructure or the slave machine with my master or with my master uh, ansible so all all the changes that i want to do on the slave machine or the state that i want to mention uh, or maintain for the slave machine has to be done on master okay so before we reach that point we will have to learn a little bit things a little bit of uh, things yeah? so let's do that um first of all i need to tell ansible that i want to manage this host which is ansible uh, which is a slave host so i will take the ip address of this host which is 10 128 yeah and i will use an inventory file you know we saw in the slide ansible has an inventory file which lists down all the machines that ansible can manage or can work with so i am going to create an inventory file if it is not already existing so inventory files are always present in etc ansible etc ansible hosts so etc ansible hosts is the inventory file press enter and there is already one host connected now i will tell ansible that i want to manage this host the name of the host is slave so i want to manage this slave host which has this ip address and save there is only one slave added yeah now how do i check if ansible knows about this slave i can simply say ansible hyphen m ping slave okay so it look, looks like there is a syntax error here somewhere mm -hmm. ah okay all right so i cannot give ip address so i need to just manage uh just give me a moment i will man mention this here so now my system knows where slave is pink slave okay the format is incorrect so i need to tell 
my master because I don't have correct DNS setup. So I need to tell my master that slave machine is actually this IP address. Yeah. So I configure this. I will test if my master knows where the slave is. So this machine should know where the slave is now. It is able to ping that machine. Very nice. And now I need to again modify my inventory file modify the inventory file to tell that I need to manage this this machine so my ansible infrastructure now will manage the slave machine yeah just save it so now if I run the command hyphen m ansible hyphen m ping and then slave ansible should ping the command now again there is a problem here so what happens is as i mentioned ansible should be able to ssh to the target machines right so we have not enabled ssh between master and slave so let's enable ssh right now i'm not going to explain what is ssh in this session because that is something uh, very basic which uh, which you should know already in advance to work with ansible but just to give you an idea ssh is a protocol which is used to uh, securely in an encrypted connection connect to the terminal of remote machines right ssh stands for secure shell so for that i need to enable passwordless ssh okay so i'm going to so that passwordless ssh works on public private keys so to set up ssh i need to uh, you know enable ssh uh, i may not be able to explain everything what i'm doing right now but i can do that quickly to get, get this demo running yeah so let's see we have already done uh, All right. So I have uh, done SSH setup, right? How do I know if I my SSH is working perfectly fine? I can just say SSH slave, and I should be remotely connected to the slave machine. You can see here I am connected to the slave machine now, right? So I'm remotely logged into the slave machine. I will log out, and now I will run my ping command again. Okay, now SSH is working fine and Ansible will check my host file or my inventory file, see what server slave means and then ping that server, right? So here it says ping is successful. That means my communication is set up correctly. Okay. All right, maybe a lot of confusion right now because I'm going very fast uh, and uh, it's a new concept to you guys. So let me recap a bit. We saw some demonstration. What did we do? We installed Ansible on our master machine. Right, and we enable SSH passwordless communication. Right, so if you want to keep it simple, just and understand that the that this machine can log into this machine. That's all okay that's what we did now after installing ssh oh sorry after installing ansible i needed to tell ansible that i want to manage certain servers using ansible and that information is stored in the um in the inventory file the inventory file by default is ansible it is the ansible host Yeah, and in the inventory file, we can specify which slave we want to connect to. Right, so this slave I will manage. 
okay and now i can run a basic ansible command to check if the con connection is proper or not which is a hyphen m ping slave so what this command does is if we break down this command yeah in this command we are telling ansible to use a module called ping to execute on slave what does that mean in ansible any uh, configuration change or interaction that you have to do with the servers or with the hosts or with the slaves that has to be done using modules modules are nothing but individual binaries which can execute certain tasks right so we are using a ping module here which is nothing but connect to slave and run ping command right that is all we can also run many other modules. For example, in the presentation, we will have some examples right here. We can run shell commands. Yeah, so maybe how we do it. Let's say ansible hyphen M uh, shell hyphen a uptime right and run it on slave so here what happened so i am running this particular command on slave what is this command using a module shell yeah, using a module shell and providing the arguments uptime to the module i'm asking ansible to run that command or to run that configuration on the slave right so shell and execute command uptime shell module will take an argument of a command which can be run remotely on uh, on the slaves terminal so i get this output yeah i can pass any any command on that shell maybe just say host name and i will get a host name as slave right i can also say a module user and eureka yeah so what this will do what this command will do if we check our slave Let's check if there is an there's a user called Adureka on slave. There is no user called Adureka. Now there is a module in Ansible which is user which can create modules for you. Oh, with sorry, which can create users for you or which can manage users for you. Yeah. So I use a module called user and attribute is Adureka and run it on slave press enter so now i get a problem i get is this user task user has extra parameters which is only allowed in the following modules shell when shell okay so we need to provide extra parameters here let's see what are the parameters so what we can do is we can read more about what are the what is the documentation on this module so if I say Ansible user module, I will be taken to the documentation. And here you can we can see this module is to manage user accounts. So this is a summary, manage user accounts and user attributes for Windows targets use win user instead. Okay, let's not do that. So these are the uh, attributes which I have to pass. So that means um what is the comment for this user account what group should the user account be part of what should be the uh, home path of user account what should be the name of user account yeah and requirement required means this is a required attribute at least this attribute should have to be mandatorily specified right 
so there are a lot of a lot of uh, attributes here i'm just going to give name because that is the required attribute and i can do that using this name is equal to adulaker press enter hopefully this works this time and you see that command has worked yeah and here you can see that it has changed something on the system right and it created a user called Eduleka with uid 1002 if i run id Eduleka command again on the slave i should see that Eduleka user is created yeah if i run this command uh, if i use this module again on ansible this time output should be different if this time the output is that changed is fault or false that means no no nothing was done on the system because everything is in order as defined here if i remove the user from slave and if i run this command again from the master it will again create the new user yeah so new user is created again some questions coming ansible modules are similar to uh, powershell modules you can say like that yeah so we have to connect all slaves to one master it could be hundreds of slaves yes that is why you should enable ssh passwordless authentication on those slaves yeah which is which should be easy which can be done easily by copy pasting this authorized key files okay next question is how do we run a command on specific slave when we have multiple slaves all right so that is done using giving this slave sorry you that's what i'm doing here i'm running it on slave i can also say all which will run this command on all the machines which are available in the inventory right maybe i will add one more system in the in the inventory file so in the inventory file i will also add my local machine which is localhost which is my local machine which is this master machine yeah so master machine also is becomes one of the machine which is managed by ansible now if, if i run this command ansible have an user name adurica all then it will create adurica user on all the systems yeah let's ignore this warning for now and you can see that on uh, on the local host it created a user on slave it did not create because it already existed right i can then run this command on specific um, uh, slaves as well so i can say local host only so run this command on local host so you, I, this way we can specify a specific server or set of servers like this <sighs> okay we can also group uh, group our uh, hosts in the inventory file together using grouping but i'm not going to cover that as of now we will take a look later how can i recheck the configuration of a particular um, if if a configuration is done Done. how do we check if the configuration is applies applied or what is the current configuration on the system yeah you can do that with uh, i mean it's a very crude way to do it i can use a module called setup yeah and i can say localhost so setup module will capture every configuration information from your system and give it to you 
so here you can look for any configuration change that you did maybe but it is as i said it's not a correct solution yeah so uh, looks like you will have to you know maybe run some different module for example here you can run just to check if edureka user was created correctly or not you can run a shell command called id edureka and the output you get is to verify if something is created or not question does it require any special privileges in slave machine to run certain modules certain modules you will need special privileges for example uh, creation of users or installing of uh, any applications so right now all my commands are running as root so always i have uh, special permissions but you may uh, not run all the command as um, as root you can run commands as, as normal users as well but for privileged tasks like changing configurations of the system you will need root so that is uh, that is something that you have to do should i install python on master to run ansible when you install ansible python will be automatically installed with it how can we automate adding slaves to the master uh, you can do it using um, cm databases which is again advanced concepts for any infrastructure as code solution uh, so you can use third party tools to have uh, you know information about your systems uh, but again you know that is an advanced concept but you can do it using external cmdvs what is rc is equal to zero okay, i never paid attention to this uh, what is RC is equal to zero? Ah, this is an incorrect command. Yeah, I need to check what is RC is equal to zero. What if master is down? Then you need to make sure that master comes up on time. Uh, also, you need to ensure that your high availability is set up. So if one master is down, other should come up and take its place. That is out of scope for this discussion. So yeah, these are, uh, this is how you, you didn't specify root user for running module. Where do you specify client user privileges? So my, right now I am running Ansible commands as root and the SSH connection that goes is also via root right if you want to run command as any other user you can give the username let's say hyphen u uh, my username is let's say amit kumar like that yeah and then you can also give hyphen k to become the user so now you will be asked for password to connect as a different user yeah so by default it runs as a user which is your current terminal logged in user okay so what we did right now was to run ad hoc commands an ad hoc command is something which we run on the command line which we can use to you know uh, achieve small tasks maybe quickly we want to know the system updates or quickly we want to make some changes on 500 systems like we want to create a file on 500 systems or we want to get some data on five from 500 systems we can do that yeah uh, but this is not how we will actually do things in production this is not how we are going to uh, how we are going to um, manage our production environment right so that is done using playbooks okay the playbook is a concept of um, capturing all your configuration tasks or configurations of a server in a file yeah and the file playbooks are always stored in 
YML formats or YAML format. Okay, so let's see. Let's take a look. Uh, uh, let's take an example of playbook and see how those are done. Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to write a playbook just so that we understand how it works. So let's create a playbook called playbook.yml. Yeah, and the playbooks always start with three dashes for uh, YAML format and then on which host the playbooks should run. We need to specify that. Right, so we have two hosts configured. One is local host, one is slave. So on which host should the playbook run? Let's say I want to run playbook on slave. Yeah. Now, what are the tasks that I want to run on this particular playbook? Right. What are the things that I want to do on this particular play uh, on this particular host? So I will create a list of tasks. I will give the name to each task. For example, the name will be I'll just copy everything from the slide install Nginx Nginx is nothing but a web server, right? And then which module am I going to use? I'm going to use apt module. Yeah, I'm going to use app module. Uh, then I will specify the arguments or attributes for this module. So this uh, attribute needs the name of the application. So package is name is nginx. What should be the state? I will not specify anything else. I think that will be taken care of automatically. So state installed is the default value for this module. So I will leave it like that package is equal to nginx Yeah, and that is all I will keep it simple like this. That is all I will say control X Yes And save I saved my yaml file. Let's take a uh, Maybe Now let's run the playbook. Let's take a uh, quick look at playbook that we created just now. I will explain it again So this playbook is going to run on slave yeah, and it is going to perform these tasks. There's only one task that we have defined. We can define more, but right now we have defined only one task. And this task is to install Nginx. This is the name that we have given. And the module, how do we achieve this task? By using a particular module. Yeah, so apt package is equal to Nginx. Okay, now we say Ansible playbook. Now there's a command called Ansible playbook. Yeah, and we want to see the syntax of the command. I just ran the command without any arguments and you can run playbook commands like this Ansible playbook options playbook.yaml or any file that you want to give. So what I will do is Ansible Ansible playbook and playbook.yaml. So I want to now execute this playbook. I press enter. Let's see what happens. It says syntax error in line five. Mm -hmm. Okay. Let's fix this error. So YAML is a very strongly typed language. Let's try it again. Yeah, so there is a specific in uh, there is a specific style to write YAML file. So now it is running the task of installing Nginx. On my target machine. So while this runs, uh, Adirika has given me a specific or a special link to get feedback from you guys and also to to uh, you know let you know that if you are more interested in uh, in uh, you know webinars from Adirika and things like that, then please fill up this form, show up, show your interest. Where did it go? 
okay show your interest and uh, let them know yeah so now it says could not find aptitude using uh, using applications so yeah it is done yeah it is installed nginx is installed okay ignore this because this is something related to ubuntu let's not get into that but actually the task was successful okay we can check that by going looking at etc nginx where this application should be generally installed yeah and i will just check one thing So now nginx is installed and also service is running right if i connect to this instance on port 80 my slave maybe this is not my slave no this should this should be my slave so if not port 80 then So here you can see nginx is up and running on my slave right so just with small configuration on my master just writing this small configuration file i managed to install nginx on the slave now i can extend this to to you know completely configure the entire slave with different different uh different different things here yeah? maybe i can say uh name create nginx user so i will add more configurations which i want to manage uh, user name is equal to nginx something like this i can continue extending this this playbook to achieve how i want to see my uh, my systems right and if i save this i run this playbook again and here you can see it did not do anything for nginx because it is already installed but it created nginx user so if i if i check nginx user i see this user yeah i if i want to make a bulk change or make a big change to my infrastructure i can do just a configuration change here and say state is equal to absent that means this tool or this software should not be available on my system right again state is equal to absent so both things should be uninstalled or removed from this configuration or from this server instead of writing instead of uh, executing this on one slave i can just say run it on all my slaves yeah so if i run the playbook now it will apply that change to all my hosts right so now removing nginx there was no nginx available on local host so this came as okay but on slave it uninstalled so that's why you can see it has changed same thing for slave here so now if i see here nginx will not be available and if i say service nginx status so service i have to stop service is not stopped yet i guess yeah so service i will need to stop Yeah, so this is how you can run playbooks 
to have complete configuration managed of your infrastructure. So I just show you a small example uh, where you can install Nginx and create Nginx user, but you can do whatever you want. You can install Jenkins, you can uh, configure Jenkins users, uh, you can copy over your application files and deploy it to the target servers and things like that. Question from Raja. In Ubuntu, normally root user will be disabled for login. How to do for this? Uh, so if uh, you don't have root user in, uh, in corporate environments, I understand teams are disabled uh, from using root users. So if you have any other privileged account where you can run sudo commands and all, that you can do using, uh, as I said, run the command as a specific user yeah using hyphen u and hyphen k right so in case you don't have root access but you have sudo access then you can use this but if you do not have even sudo access then you cannot use ansible at all for making any system changes Any questions? question is which documents do you prefer to learn ansible well i actually learned ansible from ansible itself yeah they have excellent tutorial uh, yeah. User guide. yeah but actually yeah i mean if you want to succeed in devops roles i would say take a look at the uh, Adudica DevOps DevOps course. Yeah, uh, with the in Adudica DevOps course, we you know Adudica teaches the whole DevOps uh, landscape of tools, starting from Git, uh, Jenkins, Selenium, uh, Puppet, Ansible, Docker, Kubernetes, Nagios, Cloud. Everything is covered. So I will say you know take a look there, uh, fill up that form which I shared with you. If you want to get better quotes from Edureka, if you are interested in taking this up. So I will suggest that, highly recommend that. I also train with Edureka for DevOps sometimes if uh, I have the availability. For dev test and prod environment, we should prefer to create separate playbooks. Uh, yes, exactly. All right, so thank you. That is all from my end. Uh, if you have any questions, I think that feedback form uh, should help you in uh, in asking the questions. Uh, you can always get in touch with Adureka and uh, you know ask for more questions or clarifications. Uh, I think this recording also will be shared with you. So uh, all the best, good luck, and uh, wish you all the best for your career. Yeah, thank you, thank you, and have a great day and great weekend ahead. Bye bye.